three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, welcome back to Mission Control for another feature focused video. In this video we're going to discuss key profiles. Key profiles set how keys behave, either for the console as a whole, global, or per playback. For the system menu, AVO plus disk, choose key profiles to edit the global settings or options handle per playback. You can also quickly set a playback's key profile by pressing and holding the options key and then the blue key of the playback. This is new for version 14. Also new for version 14, the Titan Go interface will show the name of the key profile on the key itself. So let's take a look at that. Here, I'll get version 14 of Titan with the Titan Go interface up. As we can see down here on our keys below, uh, if it has a different key profile than the standard uh, flash and swap buttons, it has stop and go on this particular key list. So there's a few different ways we can get to the key profiles. We either press the system key and then find key profiles from our list, as we can see here. Uh, or we go through our user settings also. So if we were to press and hold the AVO key or right click on the virtual interface and then user settings, key profiles, and then click here. And then we can ch change them here also. We can also get to them by if we wanted to press and hold the AVO key, again, right click, and then we can select key profile or edit the current key profile uh, from there. So let's go ahead and go to our key profiles here. If we click view profiles, we can see the uh, all the stock ones here, run, takeover, program, theater, and nightclub. If we were to click on run, such as run, uh, we can see here down the side of our Titan Go interface or in the context menu on the rest of them, which would be right about here on the interface. Uh, we can see what each keys are set to do uh, by default. Or we could edit a profile. We could add a new one. Uh, we could delete one if we had any uh, custom ones built or rename a custom one. So let's go ahead and add a profile. And we'll just call this one test. And we'll hit OK. And then we can base it off of a current one. We'll go ahead and base it off of the program. And then we can select for which uh, type of item it is for which key profile it has. So if it was a fixture, I'll select it and then have what the keys would do for a fixture key or a group, a palette, a queue, a chase, uh, queue lists, macros, uh, the options on it, or if it was a master. So if we do it for cues, we can see what they're already set at here. Or we could change them. If we wanted to change our blue key in our test one, to instead of being swap, we could have it be timed flash. And we could have our gray key be select if. And our touch and editor key, instead of latch, we'll set it to be release. Now a virtual black key, uh, the black key is only available on the Sapphire Touch or in the virtual playbacks window. Uh, so we can set it here if we wanted to set it to something, we'll go ahead and set it disabled for this one. Now the touch executor key, this would be if it is a touch screen button, such as one of our palettes or macro buttons here, or if it was a, an executor or macro button on the physical console uh, itself. It won't be the color of that key, it'll be the all the executors are going to be this function here. So once we're done, we can just exit out of it. And then we could assign that profile to a key if we wanted to. What's also new for version 14 is we press and hold our options key or right click on the virtual interface and then hit the blue key of one of our playbacks. We can edit the key profile for that particular playback. Uh, we can either uh, change it to one of the existing ones or we use like the one we just made, the test. Set it here, and we now see that our blue key is time flash and our gray key is select if. Or we could make a new one if we do it on one of our other ones. We'll press and hold the option key again, and we'll choose this playback. And we could add new, we could give it a name, just leave it as that one, or type in a new one, we'll leave it as that one. And I'll say on this one, I want my blue key to be, oh, we'll have that be preload, and our gray key be timed flash. So now if I exit out of here, we can see that it's preload and timed flash. Here we can go through what each key can be set to do uh, for what type of item the key is connected to, whether it be a queue, a chase, a queue list, 
or a macro. If it's a queue, the keys can be allocated, disabled, flash, time flash, swap, latch, go, preload, temp tempo, release, or select diff. Uh, disabled is obviously just like it sounds. The disabled, the key will do nothing. Flash will be the flash uh, button. So if you press and hold it, the playback will come on. When you let it release it, it will go back to uh, being off. Time flash will follow the uh, fade times the fade in and fade out times of the playback, uh, or the time flash, which are a separate uh, keys. So you have a different fade in or fade out when using the flash key. Swap uh, will swap to that playback and temporarily kill other playbacks and release that the other playbacks will come back on. Latch will lock that playback or item on. Go is the go button. Preload is like move in dark, but for a queue. So it will move all the fixtures that don't have uh, current output and move them to the position and the gobo and color and all of that, uh, so they're preset in place. Tap tempo, just like it sounds, you can tap tempo for uh, any effects you have in your queue. Release, release that playback. Select if, select if will select all the fixtures that that queue contains. If the chase, the keys can be allocated, disabled, flash, time flash, swap, latch, go, stop, preload, connect, tap tempo, release, and select if. The keys we haven't gone over already would be stop and connect stop. Obviously, would stop the chase. Connect would connect to that chase to the wheels, so you can adjust the BPM and cross fade uh, for that particular chase to the wheels. If the item we're setting the key for is a queue list, the keys can be allocated, disabled, flash, flash and go, time flash, time flash and go, swap, latch, go, stop, preload, connect, tap tempo, next queue minus, next queue plus, review, Live queue, cut next queue to live, snap back, go back, release, and select if. The keys we haven't already covered in this section would be flash and go, meaning that if we press and hold the flash key, it will flash the playback up, and then when we release it, it will step to the next queue. Time flash and go. Obviously, we use time flash, so it'll use the fade in and fade out times as you've set. Uh, when you release it, it'll go to the next step in the queue list. Next queue minus, next queue plus will go up and down the queues in the queue list, wait for you to hit go to go to that particular queue. Review live queue will replace the current queue using its fade times. Cut next queue to live will fire the next queue, ignoring its times. Snap back. Queue list will snap back to the previous queue without times. Go back. Well, queue list will go back to the previous queue using fade times. If the item we are setting the key for is a macro, this can be set to either select or prefer macro. The macro function will take precedence over other functions stored on the button. A link of each function's description can be found in the manual, which we'll link to in the video description below. If the item we're setting a key profile for is a master, uh, if it's a rate or intensity or BPM master, the options are disabled, selection, flash, latch, connect, tap tempo, nudge up, nudge down, release, reset multiplier, multiplier 2x, multiplier divided x, or freeze. For the functions for keys we haven't discussed already would be selection, would select that master, nudge up and nudge down, would nudge the master up or down depending, reset multiplier would reset the multiplier to 1x, multiplier x2 would set the multiplier to 2x, or multiplier slash 2 would divide the multiplier by 2. Freeze is generally used for a rate or BPM master, it would drop the rate to 0, and then when released return to whatever it was. If it's a group master or group buttons, the options are select group, flash fixtures, time flash, flash master, time to flash master, and swap fixtures. Uh, these are just like the, they would sound. A select group would select the group, flash fixture would flash those fixtures for that, time flash would be a, just like time flash before. Flash master would use that master as a flash, time flash master same with, but with timing, or swap the fixtures would swap to just those fixtures. If we're setting the key profile for a scene master, the options are disabled, preload scene mode, exit scene mode, enter scene mode, commit changes, commit changes and exit scene mode, enter or exit scene mode, enter or commit scene mode, and reset scene mode. The last is new for version 14. Reset scene mode is basically clear for the scene master, clearing the contents of the scene you are about to go into. If we're setting the keys for as a pixel mapper layer master, the options are disabled, select, flash, swap, and latch. Again, remember the black key is only for the sapphire touch and the virtual faders. For fixed buttons, the options are disabled, select, flash, swap, and latch. If it's a palette key or button, the options are disabled and select palette. The options for it are also palette takes precedence over flash, flash takes precedence over palette. Palette's fired ignoring its times. 
palette is fired with its times. So if you have a time recorded into a palette, you can set it to palette is fired with its times and it will honor those times. Also in the options menu for the key profile as a whole, quick record can be disabled. So you see here, I've got the Titan Go interface up with our some of our playbacks have had their key profiles changed. So to go through the start of them, if we have some keys up here, and we hit say the swap key on this one, we can see the other playback stop playing and just this one plays. When I release it, the other ones return. However, if I use the flash key, it would flash the this playback but continue to play in the other ones. When I released it, it would stop playing. On the back here, I've got preload and selective. If I was to hit preload, it would basically move our fixtures that are not on, which in this case is all of them, into their positions, colors, and gobos for this playback. So if we don't use preload, we just bring it up. We see that our movers sweep into position. If we were to release that and we were to hit preload, we can see that our fixtures move into their position and then when we bring it up, they're already in position and color. This can be helpful. Selective will select all the fixtures that are in this playback. So if we click it, we can see that it selects all of our fixtures that are contained in this playback. On this one here, we've got release and latch. If we were to hit the latch key, it would basically lock that playback on until we pressed it again and it would turn it off. If we had it on and then we hit the release key, it would release that playback. Over here, we've got flash and timed flash to show the difference. If we hit flash, we see that it comes on immediately. If we use timed flash, see that it uses the fade times to fade into it. And when we release it, it fades back out. This playback also has an overlap in it. Here we've got a cue list with stop and go for the key profiles. If we bring our fader up and hit go, we obviously go to our first cue. Hit go again and we go to our next cue, so forth and so forth down the line. If we hit stop in the middle, it would stop that fade in the middle of the fade. And we hit go, continue it again. So that's key profiles in version 14 of Titan. I hope you learned something. Please subscribe and join us next time. Thanks, bye. We'll stop. Roger, we'll stop Discovery. Welcome back. A great ending to the new beginning.